Okay, are we set, Jen, with the recording and all? Thank you. So good afternoon. I'm Ruth Trimarkey, Chair of the Winchester Board of Health. It's April 22nd, 2022, and I call this regularly scheduled meeting to order. The meeting is being recorded. World call vote for attendance, Maureen Pimentel. I hear. Uh, Dr. Sawicki. Here. And Ruth Trimarkey is here. Thank you. So before we jump into the agenda, I just want to really thank Jen Murphy for making herself available. She's been traveling a bit. She's on vacation. Jen has been responding to texts, emails, and phone calls at night and throughout recent days um, as we've been monitoring information to inform the best public health recommendations that the board can make for the upcoming town meeting. I'd like to also remind all participants at this point to please mute yourselves. Thank you. Um, I, I want to say that for the past two years, Jen and her team have reliably been stepping up whenever needed, including weekends and holidays. And just personally, Jen, it's an enormous help uh, to know you're out there and I just want to thank you. So last week, the board, uh, we developed a set of recommendations to prepare the physical space and for attendees to follow while indoors at the town um, high school for spring town meeting. And I'd like to note that COVID numbers continue to change daily. And unfortunately, none of us has a crystal ball. I wanna point out also that home testing with the rapid antigen test has been a boon for a lot of people. So you can self-test, you can plan your movements accordingly. It also, however, means that we have a little bit less data for how many active COVID cases there are in Winchester or anywhere else. And additionally, the current dominant Omicron variant in our area seems to have reduced the short-term effects like illness serious enough that people are hospitalized and it's fortunately also reduced deaths. So we're happy about that. Um, it also means that data we've been utilizing for two years to assess COVID developments is less reliable right now. So many of us follow the wastewater data. It's a well-established technique to follow transmissible illnesses and it accurately reflects the rises and falls in COVID particles shed by infected people and flush, flushed into the wastewater. And some of this I'm saying knowing full well that the Board of Health members know this, but I am striving here to be as transparent as possible with everyone in the public as to what data we are following and why we are following it. So Winchester's wastewater, for anyone who doesn't know, goes to Deer Island and Winthrop. It's analyzed there and then it's processed as part of the North system before it's released to the ocean. MWRA's posting of the data always lags by at least a day, sometimes more. Most recently, there was a five day lag with the Russia data that came out on Wednesday. So we are all doing our best to uh, assess what our moving target, basically. I wanna now put up some current data for us to take a look at so everyone's on the same page here. I'm gonna share this. I'm first sharing here a screenshot that I put it together quickly. Um, and the point of this is just to um, take a look at the, the whole year before we zoom in, uh, not the whole year, going back to March, 2020. And I wanna draw your attention to a couple of things here. You will see that in this wastewater analysis, which is measured in copies of RNA per milliliter of tested wastewater, that there's rises and falls and little blips up and little blips down, so on. Last summer in 2021, we had a pretty flat area there and numbers, because we're, we're gonna be talking about numbers to put it into perspective, we're in the tens. And then we got this slow little creep up over the fall into hundreds and um, right around after Thanksgiving and in the beginning of December, it really began to escalate and we hit a thousand. There we began the Omicron surge, which hit 8,644 and that was on January 5th, 2022. And then this very sharp plummet through January and February. We see a little bit of rise again um, here. And I'm going to switch now. Let's see. Do I have which way do I have this? Um, sorry. This is uh, the. Um, this is not a screenshot. 
this is live. So this is as of yesterday's data, which is posted. It's the most recent data we have. And you'll see that we have this little blip up and down and we move down to um, zooming in on that part of the several year chart, looking just here from February, where I told you it's coming down and March and through here, we have this slight leveling off and then downward turn. It is hard to look at a graph. I'm going to just briefly bring us to uh, the actual raw data so that you can see that the graph is, of course, is this going to come up? Yeah. The graph, of course, smooth things out, smooths things out nicely for us to look at. Um, additionally, what you're looking at here, now bring us down this column, this fourth column in here. Well, there's the date. The fourth column is a seven day average, which smooths things out for the North region. Ruth, Ruth, I don't mean to interrupt you, but all I see is a half screen of data that from 6-1-2020. I'm not sure if everybody else is looking at that or if I'm just lagging. Thank you for letting me look. No. Are you seeing um, a graph or a table of numbers? I'm seeing the first half of the graph that starts on 3-1-2020. On one, hmm. one, one, uh, hmm. I'm thinking maybe there is a lag time in uh, the internet uh, reception there because I'm already off of the graph and onto a table. Um, Dr. Sawicki, are you seeing a graph I or a table? A, I see a graph too still, so. Hmm. Okay, um, that's all right. I'm going to stop the share actually at this point and I can just verbally make the points that I need to make, which, um, yes, hang on one second there. So um, the long and the short of showing that is to say that the wastewater is an excellent data point, one of the most important ones that we're following right now, that it is showing a slight leveling and possibly a very uh, one data point that looks down, that is down, but that it is a very small part of a much larger picture. And of course, again, we don't have a crystal ball. I also wanna let people know, um, looking at a little bit further than just Winchester and uh, our immediate region, for folks who may not know, there is a new subvariant in New York State, BA 2.12.1, that's two and a half times more infectious than the BA 2. There's also a BA4 and BA5 rising rapidly in other parts of the world. So that's just another piece of information for us to have. And we also, and I think perhaps some of the other board members may wanna to speak to updated information about uh, local cases and from um, data from our hospital president. So um, I'm gonna be quiet. At this point, I would like to open it for discussion to the board and uh, see where are you at. Dr. Sawicki. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to thank you for sharing that data. I think, you know, I don't want to belabor the point, but since our last meeting on April 12th, there clearly was an uptick in the wastewater data. There also was a rise in the um, cases that were reported to the town on the town dashboard. I know you didn't mention that, but there was, you know, from about 40 cases in the week to about 70 cases the following week. We're obviously still lagging behind in terms of the more recent numbers. We also know that this is April vacation week, so families are away and traveling. We're also aware that the federal government ha has because of a court ruling ended the mask mandate on public transportation, including airlines, as well as other forms of, of transportation. And so we're at a point now where mask mandates and other mitigation measures at a population level are certainly going down with, while we're seeing sort of this small bump and hopefully only a small bump in, the, in, in regional cases. We're also aware that the CDC has reclassified Middlesex County into a higher risk uh, area and that has also changed soon after our last meeting. At our last meeting, we did put together what I thought was a very sensible set of recommendations for the upcoming town meeting indoor gathering. Um, and I think it is still our intention to be supportive of the town leadership to make an in-person meeting uh, as, as safe as possible from a public health perspective. I think what's changed in the last 
10 days is that there has been a slight increase. And we, we could talk about what is significant in terms of an increase, but there is an actual increase. And whether or not that's stabilized or plateaued, that's really good news over the last couple of days. And maybe there is a slight decline in wastewater data, but I think it's too soon to tell what kind of a trend that will be. And given that the meeting is now upcoming in three days, um, and it's the day right after uh, April vacation week, I think it is important for us to really be uh, seriously considering whether we need to be a little bit more strict in terms of uh, some of the mitigation measures for the upcoming town meeting sessions, which are in person. As I said at our last meeting, town meeting is not the same as the normal high school environment. It's not a group of high school students that are mostly healthy and younger. This is a group of individuals who are elected to serve the town and to fulfill their duties based on election. So it is not an optional exercise to participate in town meeting. Town meeting is full of people who come from all stripes of life, all walks of life, all different types of health risks, many of whom um, we may know, many of which we may not know, and that's not our job to know people's individual health risks, but we understand that there are seniors in town meeting, there are people who live with or uh, uh, with immunocompromised individuals or young children, and it runs the gamut. And so I think as our duty as public health stewards for the town, we really need to make sure it is as safe as possible. The recommendations we, we set out to town meeting members included a strong recommendation for indoor masking for everyone, but it was not a requirement for indoor masking. And that was how I felt uh, back on the 12th. I think with the rise in what we've seen locally and regionally, I, I would very much be in favor of us increasing that requirement to an actual um, requirement mandating the Board of Health, uh, from the from mandating use of indoor masks from the Board of Health during the town meeting indoor sessions. This is not about town-wide policy. This is not about policies affecting schools or other in, in, uh, elements of town life, but it is specific for the town meeting sessions in which we're gonna have well over 200 people in the high school auditorium at any given time. And I think our job as the Board of Health is not to think about you know, whether it's convenient or not, or whether it's enforceable or not, but to say what is really the best course of action to allow the most people on town meeting to participate in as safe a manner as possible. Ruth, you're on mute. So, sorry. Thank you, Dr. Sawicki. And Ms. Pimentel, would you like to offer some comments at this time? Uh, I mean, having looked at this data for years now, I don't feel like any of it has changed since we met last. Uh, without the exception of the positive of the wastewater going down, which is always indicative that we're sort of on the downtrend of things. Um, I think that the moderator has set out a clear plan. I think we set out a clear plan that makes it safe, that makes it that people don't have to be in the room if they don't want to be. They can be in the cars, they can be in the public areas outside the auditorium. Um, and I think the extra level of a mask mandate is not where we are as a country right now, and it's not where we should be as a town. Thank you. <coughs> Um, we have um, several, several viewpoints of the same data here. Um, I will say that my reading of the overall situation, including the data that I just put up, plus the additional data that's being referenced, is that it would be prudent for us at this time to take the step of having universal masking while attendees are indoors at the high school. Um, and there's been, uh, I really wanna to stress to everyone that there has been a great deal of conversation with our health director and she with all of the people and, and staff and so forth that have to deal with implementing this. Um, and it isn't easy. You know, it is not an easy thing for us to ask uh, to go the additional step right now that uh, beyond making this a recommendation to make it an actual mandate. Um, I am encouraged by the fact that there has been close cooperation and close uh, communication with everybody involved as we sent out in that original letter with our recommendations a week ago. Um, I am uh, confident that the town is going to be pulling together to, first of all, keep the town safe, keep the attendees at the town meeting safe, as, as safe as possible um, in, the, in the environment we're operating in, and to then ensure that we can have the governance 
that we need to have smoothly carried out. And that, that is a high priority. Um, Springtown meeting has a lot going on. We're all well aware of that. We wanna have it operate as smoothly as possible. Town moderator did take our recommendation seriously a week ago and has made multiple accommodations for spacing the meeting out and uh, taking care of that piece of it. And we'll continue to, uh, to take care of that piece, which is in her purview. Um, our health director, knowing that we might possibly move to an additional recommendation today, took the step of drafting an order based on previous masking orders and ran that by town Ruth, council. before we get to the order. Go ahead, Before Maureen, we get to the order, can yeah, I, just, but, can I yes. ask one question? So of I just, course. I one of the things that people are always been a very big sickler about was what data points we were using to implement and unimplement. And sometimes we weren't always clear as a board, but at this point, just sort of all the home testing. So it's very hard to understand case counts at this point. So the points that I've always looked at recently are sort of wastewater, hospital use, utilization, vaccination rates, and, you know, um, those are the things that I more closely look at. And with a population that's vaccinated over 95% with wastewater numbers going down and with our own Winchester Hospital last night emailing saying that they have very limited COVID in the hospital, Massachusetts has very limited COVID in the hospital. I just am wondering if we can be clear what data point that you and Greg are looking at to say that we should go the extra level to put in a mask mandate. And that will just be my last question because I think that the people in Winchester deserve to know what exact data point that you're looking at that says, okay, at this point we should pivot. So uh, I'll, can I take that quickly? I mean, I think that you're absolutely right that there are multiple data points that reflect the population a level of COVID transmission, including hospitalization rates, which I think you're right, have remained low and remain low locally as well, which is an encouraging sign. The wastewater data does show an uptick with a little bit of a downtrend, as we've mentioned. Um, and I think it's a little bit early to say wh where that is. Um, uh, whether it's going to last week when we weren't going to, but last week when we weren't putting a mandate in, it was going up. So it's well, now it, going down and we're well, putting it, mandate in. So I just, I, it, these are the things that are difficult for the public to understand sometimes. So that's so why I, I just want to be clear. I also want to make, make it very clear that this is not, this is yay for, yes, for, yes for the public, but it's more importantly for the town meeting members. Town meeting members are not all town citizens. We're not talking about a mandate for the entire town. We're talking about it for a very specific event. That very specific event is an indoor gathering of uh, over 200 people of, uh, as I said, many of whom may not want to attend an event if they feel like their health is at risk. And we as a town government really are obligated to allow full participation in town government. And I see no actual plausible scientific reason that we shouldn't have everyone wearing a mask to allow for the most vulnerable members of town meeting to participate fully. And if we were to take an analogy, if, if there was someone with a significant peanut allergy who could have anaphylaxis because there were peanut products present in an indoor space, we take as a leaps and bounds society view that we do not allow peanut products in a place. So for an indoor space where there are potential people who could get sick, despite being vaccinated, despite having taken other mitigation measures in their personal lives, this is not an optional event for them. So I think that it behooves us to basically say that for this particular set of events, indoor masking is the safest way to proceed if the choice is not to go to a remote meeting. And we understand that it's that is not a choice that is, that is possible or being made at this point. There are neighboring towns and other towns throughout the state that have town meeting governments that have gone to virtual meetings because of the similar data that we are looking at. There are other towns in which the uh, town leadership has uh, led to a universal masking requirement and that then some of it came from the Board of Health, some of it did not. I've looked at multiple other towns. There are other towns obviously that have pro provided mask optional uh, policies as well. That said, you know, I was elected for this position because I said I would follow data, which we've talked about, but also make decisions based on what is most safe for the most vulnerable members of our community. And I think there are plenty of people on town meeting that I think would value the opportunity to participate in town meeting, but without a universal masking requirement, given where we are right now, that may change in a week, that may change in two weeks, um, but given the fact that the meeting is starting in three days and it is a, it is we are at a more risky place today than we were 10 days ago when I wasn't pushing for this, um, I think that this is why, why I feel that way. And I think we can we can quibble and argue and disagree about sort of what is a acceptable level of risk. 
um, in terms of an individual, in terms of a population. Different people have different viewpoints of risk, but I mean, but that is essentially where I feel uh, as, as most prudent as the public health steward. Yeah, no, I guess I Thank just you. feel like uh, we were going to put a mass I, meeting could, and we should have done it two, 10 days ago because that's where the data was. The data is actually better now, so that's what's so hard about it. And I'm, I'm not going to belabor, you guys can vote, I, it doesn't matter, but I just, I think that that's what's so hard about it is the data is actually better now. So it, it makes not. no sense and to me. And that's why um, I just need to correct you, Maureen, on that. <laughs> it is. I just need to correct you on that. Um, there are, there's data, I'll, yeah, as we say, that is variable in different areas. It's hard to- uh, Ruth, we don't need to yeah. belabor the point. We can Maureen, just let I, it go. I need Let's to just correct, have a vote. Maureen, I need to correct you that the data we voted on a week ago is as Dr. Sawicki correctly said, it is higher now, just looking at the wastewater. Yes, there is a one day data point, which is down today from yesterday, as best we, there's always a day lag. However, at the point we voted a week ago, the numbers were at 418 particles of COVID per milliliter of tested wastewater. That then went up and uh, continued upward, from 418, it went into the fives, it went into the high sixes with a high of 675. Today it is 642 or today as in 420. Um, so it is still, the numbers need to be correctly stated that they are higher now and have continued to be higher over the past week with the exception of one single day, that they are higher now than when we made our, um, our decision a week ago. So it is, again, as Dr. Sawicki has said, and I will state, it is not a single data point that I'm making my recommendation on. It is the whole array of data points. But on that particular one, I need to say emphatically that the numbers are higher now than when we last met. Dr. Sawicki. But with that, I think let's just get through this. I'd like to make yep. a motion. Um, and I move that the Winchester Board of Health. Hang on. I'm sorry, oh, Dr. Sawicki. There's yes. actually an order which was written up. Well, uh, I, well then I move that, that the, Win the Winchester Board of Health re uh, review. Uh, do you want us to review the order? Is that what you want to say? Um, it's up to the board. It is it is available. I can screen share that if you want. It's basically the same thing that has been said before. Um, and it's uh, I, I under the circumstances, I think it might be wise for us to share exactly what that is, if you don't mind. And That's then fine. feel free. OK, let's see if we can do this here. Please. Um, Interesting. Um, I apologize. I'm not. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Nope, that doesn't look like, that does not look right, does it? Okay, let's see what we can do here. Don't know why that's not coming up. I'll try that one more time and then we'll um, see. Okay. Screen share. Is that visible now? Is that, um, could I get input from either Dr. Swicky or um, Ms. Pimentel? Are you able to see COVID-19 public health emergency yes. regulation? Okay, thank you. So this is based on what was seen before um, or what was ordered by the Board of Health before. It says, based upon review of current data, including but not limited to, and it lists a bunch of things that we consistently look at. Um, it says that we have met today and we voted to adopt a public health mandate, um, it, which is the following indoor mask regulation. Effective Monday, at the first session of the Springtown meeting and for each session, face coverings are required for all individuals aged two years and above in all indoor spaces of town meeting, um, except where an individual is unable to wear a face covering due to a medical condition or disability. Individuals may temporarily remove their mask while speaking to address town meeting. 
And I, I believe that is at the, at the mic that the town moderator has done that, but we haven't put that in. Um, and while actively eating and drinking, if permitted in the venue. So that phrase would cover however town moderator has set that up. The Winchester Board of Health and authorized agents um, are authorized to enforce this regulation and may do so with the assistance of the poli Winchester police and other designees appointed by the town manager. Violations of this regulation may be punished by a civil fine if after a verbal warning of up to $300 per violation in the manner provided for, for non-criminal disposition of violations of Board of Health regulations. This mandate will be reviewed by the Board of Health at a regular meeting every Monday or sooner if the chair deems necessary. If no action is taken by the Board of Health to rescind it, this regulation will remain in effect throughout the duration of the Springtown meeting. So we can tweak some aspects of this. For instance, we do not have to tie ourselves into meeting every Monday or what any other pieces of this. Um, Dr. Sawicki. Well, I think it makes sense to periodically review it given that there may be changes. And I think if after the first week, after vacation week, we see trends really going in an encouraging direction, we can have that conversation. So I think it's fine to leave it in. Okay. Any other comments on it by you or Ms. Pimentel? Seeing none, do I hear a motion um, to adopt I move, these? I move that we accept this order as written. I'll second that. Roll call vote. All in favor. I'm sorry, uh, I second it. And then uh, discussion is allowed by the board members. Is there any additional discussion that you'd like to offer? Okay, so the motion is made, it's seconded. Uh, I'm going to ask again that everyone turn their mics off there. Um, okay, so roll call vote. Um, Dr. Sawicki? Aye. Ms. Pimentel? No. And Ruth Trimarki votes yes as well. So that is a 2-1 vote for, um, for taking notes there. Okay, uh, with that, the only other business that uh, we have um, is to consider, well, there were no minutes, there is no additional old business or new business. Um, we'll move to adjournment. Do I have a motion? I move to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. Uh, so, we have a roll. I'm sorry, I see now. Um, again, Ms. Wants Murphy. To Jen, do you, Ms. Murphy, would you like yes. to speak? So, Hi, sorry. I, I, I would just like for the, the viewing public to know that we will be handing out KN95 masks um, at town meeting and be using, um, you know, education as a, as a means of compliance. So just asking people to please don a mask while they are attending town meeting indoors. And we will be doing that every night of, of town meeting, but hope that we have full compliance. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so uh, roll call vote to adjourn. Dr. Sawicki? Yes. Ms. Pimentel? Yes. And that's yes for me. That's unanimous vote to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you to all the public listening in and um, have a good weekend. Thank you. <laughs>